Hi. Oh, my heart is racing. <laughs> this is incredible. Okay, so I've had a year of very intense contrast, and I've seen the way that it's served me. Because clarity is so precious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've felt really, really dark, deep darkness. <laughs> And then these well, that means beautiful... that there's something that you really care about and you're on the other end of the stick yeah the intensity of something that doesn't feel good means that there's some strong desire that you are rejecting in those moments of darkness so that's clarity too isn't it yeah yeah and so then in the moments where I've felt the relief from that it's just been like incredible yeah. like I've I have felt better than ever so you have really strong desires and you know it because when you focus in opposition to them it's really 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 uncomfortable and then you don't do that for a minute and you feel relief but can you imagine if you're feeling that much relief just from no longer pushing in opposition to what you want can you imagine how it will feel when you begin moving in concert with your desires yeah it's not just relief relief on steroids yeah ecstasy yeah yeah and that's sort of my question, I guess, is because there's this, there's the relief that comes from making peace with where I am. And then there's the good feeling that comes from like momentum forward when you make a decision to yeah. feel good. And what I think I've heard you say is that it really depends on the momentum. So if it's really, really negative momentum, then you just want to make peace with where you are. Yes, but your question implies that you have options that you don't have in the middle of all of this and here's what we mean so if you have a strong desire and out of habit you're focused in opposition to it just because you're accustomed to pushing against or worrying about something and then you don't do that and you feel the relief of it so then you begin to deliberately find thoughts of relief until not only are you feeling relieved but now you've felt enough relief that now there's not much resistance around the subject and then you can begin focusing on the subject without activating resistance right you know how this goes you knew it when you were little and you were trying not to rile your daddy and you could tell when he was in a bad mood and you could tell when he was in a good mood and your siblings said not now you dummy you knew when was the time to approach him about something and when was the time not to approach him about something your inner being isn't like that we don't mean that but we mean you know the difference between the feeling of resistance and a feeling of non-resistance so as you practice more and more the feeling of non-resistance this is what we're trying to say to you the law of attraction is taking care of things and you're not a manipulator of the law of attraction you are a player within the rules of law of attraction so if you've got some resistant thought going on it's going to get bigger and when you stop harboring that resistant thought then the law of attraction will no longer respond to it so then the thoughts that are dominant within you the law of attraction will be responding to them and you won't be introducing the stick to the moving wheel so it's a big question that people ask all the time Abraham you say be a deliberate creator and then you say practice the art of allowing you say think about what you want and then you say meditate and quiet your mind and don't think anything Abraham we're kind of confused you're making a schizophrenic what are we supposed to do we're we supposed to be deliberate or are we supposed to be allowers and we say it depends on how you feel in other words if you've got control of your vehicle and it's a wide open space push on the pedal and go fast it's more fun but you know where you are in all of this yes yeah, yeah yes and I've been feeling that lately like I've been able to do that more and more I think what I really really want is just I want to trust that I can do that and I don't want to doubt myself as much and I want to well really... there's another question to recognize when you feel doubt don't move on anything doubt means you got to wobble doubt means you've introduced resistance so when you take action in the midst of doubt you're just gonna make things worse so when you say I don't want to doubt myself anymore you're actually saying I don't want to have a guidance system that's like people getting in their car and they don't like the fact that their gas gauge says empty so they just put a happy face sticker over it <laughs> 
there. I feel a lot better on my way to running out of gas alongside of the road. And so it isn't that you want to be doubt free. It's that you want to be doubt aware. It isn't that you want to be anger free. You just want to be anger aware. And when you feel it, then you can stop and say, oh, and the earlier you catch it, the better, because if it's a little bit of anger, it's easier for you to diffuse it. If it's a lot of anger, then the momentum of it's going to take you somewhere. You might as well take a nap because you're going where your anger is going to carry you for a while, or you're going where your anger is indicating that you're going. Your anger isn't carrying you. Your anger is indicating where you're going. We keep interrupting you and we know you're going somewhere with this and we do want to hear it. We're just laying a sort of basis of understanding. And so? And so the thing, the big thing that I really want to move away from is I've been having like vertigo for the past year. The big thing mm -hmm. that I want to move away I know, from. I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. Yeah, I know. It's all right to say it like you feel it. We're not quibbling over that. You can't move away from the big thing that you want to move away from. So what does vertigo feel like? It feels like wobbling. It feels like being off balance. I know the wobble. It's all right. So it feels like out of control. It feels like unmanageable energies because your logic tells you that there's no reason for it to be there because things are as in terms of where you're standing in your physical beingness things are as stable as they've ever been in other words you're not standing on the edge of a cliff during an earthquake or anything like that so you know that it's illogical in terms of the physics of your world but it's not illogical in terms of the sort of chaos of energies around you that's why Esther enjoyed so much this little girl feeling energy and so if you catch it earlier then it doesn't get to that extent so can you make any statement do you have any awareness of what kinds of things are going on thought wise when it happens um. when was the last time you remember it happening and where were you well, it's happening right now. It's been happening all day. It, it sort of happens all the time. Um, so it's energy then. It's energy adjustment. Some in the olden days, not that long ago, <laughs> spiritualists referred to that as swooning. Mm -hmm. Esther used to feel it every time she would allow her vibration to rise for the purpose of meeting up with us. So in the early days, she always sat down while that was happening. She had a chair with really good arms on it. And she just sort of hung on for dear life because it was disorienting. Better word. It was reorienting. It was recalibrating, you see. And Esther learned to just relax into it because at first she wasn't really sure of what was happening. She didn't ask for this in the sense that she was asking for the specifics. All she was doing was quieting her mind and quieting resistance, not all of her resistance, just some of her resistance. And she was sitting with her husband, with a man who was reaching for things that she wasn't reaching for. So he was literally summoning through his desire things that Esther was not quite ready for. And so sometimes that happens to you individually. You're asking for things that you're not ready to let in. And if your asking is stronger than your readiness to let it in, you feel that sort of adjusting. So what's the remedy? More relaxation, more trust. Well, we understand it's not easy to trust what you haven't seen the evidence of. We're asking you to trust the process. We're asking you to trust the energy. We're asking you to trust your emotions. And eventually you'll have enough outcomes under your belt that you will trust those outcomes. So let's not call this vertigo. Let's call this energy adaptation or energy alignment or energy calibrating. Doesn't that feel better to you to call it that? Yeah. And it, it feels like over the past year, there has been sort of like, um, just a big shift in my life. Like I, I feel like I've like leveled up in a sense. Like I went from somewhere th that, you know, I felt a lot more discomfort and now I'm in a, a better place. And I'm, I'm wondering if maybe we want to ask you a question and we want to speak to that too, but we want to ask this question first. So you get what she's talking about, about that swooning. Do you get it? Sometimes you get it in and out of meditation. So 
Do you notice that it happens? You will be able to answer this. So just relax and hear us. Does it feel to you that that swooning or that recalibrating or that vertigo, whatever you want to call it, happens more when you are moving from a lower vibration to a higher vibration or more when you're moving from a higher vibration to a lower vibration? Mm. We can tell you is when you're moving from lower to higher because you've sort of acclimated to where you are in the world. You're used to what's on television or what's on your phone or who you've been talking to or what's going on in your world. So you've sort of adjusted to a vibration. And then when you come into a situation, it could be with a little girl on an airplane, just touching your rings and feeling the energy of you. Oh, that was a rush for Esther to feel the energy of her being moving through this other little being. Esther was sure they would glow in the dark if the airplane had been quieter. So that was an adjustment upward. You see, you're not having that feeling when you're in a high flying place and then you have a negative thought because you're more adjusted to doing that. Ooh, that's really worth thinking about. Isn't it? You are more adjusted to feeling really good about something. Esther was having dinner with friends the other night and in the middle of the conversation, they told her bad news about a mutual friend. Oh, it wasn't vertigo. It didn't feel like vertigo it felt like a kick in the gut, but it didn't feel like vertigo. That energy feeling is almost always. And we would say with you, certainly when your energies are moving upward. And so we would just focus on that and acknowledge the value of it. So now what were you about to say? So, yeah. So I guess my, my hope is that I'm, I'm going to eventually find stability and, um, this sensation will not be. Well, how would you find stability? So with Esther in the early days, she sat clinging to a chair. And then once she realized that she needed to stand up, she stood in front of a podium and sort of clung to that. And now she doesn't have it anymore. So why do you think she doesn't have it anymore? You've acclimated. She's acclimated. She's acclimated that is the natural energy you may have noticed maybe you did and maybe you didn't but after esther does this announcement which she really doesn't want to do <laughs> you might be able to tell by the really crappy way she does it <laughs> we're going on a cruise you might want to come <laughs> jerry teases her because that was his job and he did really well at it esther doesn't want to do it but after she does these announcements, she stands here longer because it takes a while for her to settle down and allow her energy to rise. This acclimation, you can't be focused on this and that at the same time. It's like with your radio dial. If your radio dial didn't have the ability to isolate a signal, it would be chaos coming through your speakers. But the radio is programmed. It's capable of isolating. That's what it does. That's what those tuners do. That's why they call them tuners. They isolate vibrations and give you what you've isolated. And that's what's happening to you. You're learning to isolate. So if you get sort of simultaneously focused and you can't get simultaneously focused, those are incorrect words. But if you're focused here, 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 then you get that sort of unstable experience where as you focus more here and here, and here then it becomes dominant and as you allow yourself because you're not afraid anymore you allow yourself through experience to trust your connection with your source energy those are interesting words to us it's interesting that we have to sell you on the notion of trusting the concept of aligning with your source this little girl Esther didn't have to talk her into that Esther didn't have to give her a conversation or here, read this book and then come back. She was just right there. She was just tuned in, tapped in, turned on. She was just there to demonstrate her awareness of energy for Esther. It was so good for Esther to see that because she's heard us saying that for a very long time. But so many of the little girls in Esther's realm and in Esther's society have already been sort of dragged away from their alignment through the restrictions and requirements of those around her. This little girl was really unique in that she was unvibrationally spoiled so far, you see. But most of you have sort of been vibrationally pulled away from your center so much so that your center feels a little off to you so much so that you're swooning as you find your center. And that feels like the offness when it's the onness. Mm, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 yeah.